Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be looking at an Eton's Easy E4, their latest controller. Uh, this particular controller is no longer has a Müller to it, so it's actually just coming down directly from Eton. And this one is uh, has a communication of a uh, Ethernet port. Which we're going to be checking out today, and the software we're going to be using is Easy Soft E, uh, Easy Soft V, uh, V7, version seven, and uh, version seven can only program the E4s. It doesn't go below that. For the previous controls, for previous controls, you would need to have a software called a V6. So, and they are. You have to buy them separately, unfortunately. So this is a burden, and they have definitely re revamped the software quite a bit. It's quite a lot into it, and things like that. Obviously, I'll show you around, but I'm not going to be showing the programming thing. So the key of this video is to have a look at how the wiring works, how to get yourself going, upload, download the program, and create some very simple program, load in, load out, just to give you. Uh, uh, idea because remember this channel is all about servicing and uh, getting things out of controls in controls modifying or whatever things like that not so much about programming so yeah that's what we're doing today we're going to be using ethernet cable for a communication and obviously a easy soft v7 and do check out uh, this uh, by the way this particular uh, control is going to be a transistor controller so we did in a previous video when we were uh, covering the older versions of uh, eton or muller at that time uh, controls we work on a relay uh, version this one is going to show you how to wire the transistor one so yeah uh, do check out a uh, manual for uh, this video i'll leave that video in the description below so uh all the right videos and anything manuals and everything else i believe will be a possible way it's going to be in the description below and by the way guys you can download the software from eton it's free you can play with it and things like that but if you want to upload and download you have to actually buy the license which is roughly about 50 quid here in UK. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, there we are. As usual, ignore this guy. This is just for something different things. And we can run through the wiring uh, as we always do. 24 volt coming to my controller, it says 24 volt V in here and 0 in here. So that will power up my controller and also the 0 in here will be powering up all my inputs. And those inputs will obviously need to be receiving 24 volts back, which is going to be from this power supply in here. So where that power supply comes from, that's those pluses needs to come back into these inputs as well. And as I do in here, so if you see down here, so my uh, a uh, T, which is my T power supply, is sending my uh, full power to these switches in here. And as these switches are clicked, it will send the 24 volt signal back to this guy in here through these cables. And the inputs are going to get activated. So uh, this is zero in here. We're going to be using that for the analogs. So uh, you, well, yeah, generally you'll be using this one for the analogs. So once we're going to be, as you can see down there, this guy, this guy in here says the i5, i6, i7, and i8 can also work as analog from zero to ten volts. We're going to check that out in upcoming video how that really works. So from there on, uh, we are uh, we have earthing in here. So and we have a transistor outputs in here. So for transistor outputs, I'm using a different power supply. So I'm actually using the uh, outputs are powered differently. So 24 volt goes in here, zero goes in here. And from there on, as the your program is executing whatever the sequence you are uh, trying to execute, we'll output 24 volt DC to, in my case, is going to be right here to these lamps and also to my conveyor belt. As you can see, my S minus is coming in here, and the pluses will be sent in from the actual controller from these outputs right there. So that's pretty much how the transistor guy works. Let me just remove uh, this one in here. So obviously, as you can see down there, that is my uh, uh, Ethernet port, which we are going to be communicating with it. This guy in here, you can remove it if you're adding a uh, add-ons. So this is like a clip, you clip them together. So this is where you would do that. And this guy in here is where you would stick your SD card in here. We might look at that in the in, uh, future. So we put SD card in there. And you can do all sorts of different things to it, which you're not going to go through today, because today is all about wiring. So from there on, let's power the bad boy up. My controller itself, when it comes down to buttons, are on a automatic IP. As you can see, Ethernet is not connected. As soon as you will uh, connect the Ethernet cable, you will uh, uh, create automatic IP, which you should do. 
I'm not sure why is it home because my laptop is just gone off. So we're going to check that in a minute. So when it comes down to buttons, up and down, and uh, left and right, so uh, delete and alt and escape. Okay, to get into your menu, it is okay. And we're not going to go too uh, too much through this menu because there's quite a lot you can do in here. So uh, in parameters, if you have any functions in there, those uh, those functions uh, function blocks will be coming in here. You'll be able to monitor them and do things like that. We're going to check this out. I'll especially put that in there. So. Uh, to show you, we can check that out in the next video. We're going to be sort of reading out analog values. So, uh, usually there is nothing in there. If there's no program, it will be empty. So, you set clock awkwardness, card functions in here, information where you can uh, uh, get some information about your uh, uh, controller. And uh, obviously, you have a systems in there, so you can set a part number. And also, it's got OS, which is your uh, firmware version. You want to check it in there. So from there on is systems operations and then and then the security for the passwords and systems you can uh, oh we need to stop that I want to do that actually might as well stop it so so in systems you can uh, go through all this list we're not going to go through this because it will take too long and then is the menu language delete or whatever you want to do delete the program if you want to do which is a net and then is a Ethernet this is the one I actually want to talk about a bit, bit extra before we get on to communications. As you can see, my internet is out of IP. If you want a, a DACP or static IP, in many cases you will need one static IP Not uh, when you are on, I presume you're on your networks and uh, you don't want IP to change. So that would be the way to go. So where you can actually go into a change it be static IP. And this is once you have a static IP, you'll be able to address, uh, edit your specific IP that you want right in there at the moment we leave everything on automatic so and everything else to do with the network and that's pretty much is the actual uh front of the controller this display in here can be used for all sorts of different things again here's to leave you that for you guys too for the programming so now that we've done that let's jump onto the laptop and get this uh, get communications with this bad boy here we are, so uh, let's load up EasySoft 7 because that's the what we need for our project, we have for our controller. So find your controller first, so there's my controller down there, so I'm going to do drag it in, select the version, my version is 1, which you already know how to find out, we just did that. And from there on, uh, you pretty much, you are almost ready to go, let's go into the communications. And we need to, as you can see, interface. I've got nothing into the interface, so we need to create the interface. So uh, we're going to go IP devices, and we're going to create a search. So one thing we need to do, we find the search. If you have, by any chance, two uh, uh, Ethernet cards uh, like I do on my uh, laptop, so uh, do make sure you use a correct Ethernet card. We have, once you've found that, and all you need to do is a set a save as IP profile. So that is done. And if all went well, so you should be able to go online with your new set profile. And here we go. Here's my controller. And as you can see, it goes live now. Now you can read pretty much all the values, that are, uh, all the values and IOs in here. So if I click my switches, you should be able to see them coming on. As you can see, changing the colors. And I'm sure you can see in the camera, you can see the one, two, and threes are jumping around on the, and on the display. So having done that, so now that we know we, 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 we are able to communicate with you, so let's go into the programming and we select what sort of a uh, programming method you want. So I am I'm a ladder guy, so uh, I'm just gonna go for the ladder. So uh, from there on, we wanna pump the program out of the controller. So we go back into the communications and let him connect to it. So, and then we go for program and a configuration. Once we've done that, so we want a device to PC. So let's pump out what is in there. So it says, uh, can program be overwritten if necessary? Yes, please, no worries with that. And it's gonna pump it all out. So there we go, we took, took out the program. And then when you go into your programming, uh, as you can see, this was what is inside the controller. This is I deliberately put it in that's very much what we're going to be looking at on the next video. So that's, ladies and gentlemen, how you get the program out. So what I want to do in here, I want to a uh, uh, insert another network. 
So from there on, we're going to create like a small latching program. So that's something we want to uh, pump it in there so we can test it. So uh, let's drag it on there. As you can see, there's a little arrow. Move the arrow onto that one. So uh, and in there, you can see you select inputs in here, which inputs are there. And also you can say make or break. So again, so we need another one. So we are going to do one for the break. So right here. And we also gonna put a uh, contact coil right there. And we need another parallel, which is gonna be right here. Ooh, that was a glitchy one. So now that we've done that, so uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make that as my uh, stop, which is gonna be a uh, two. And that's gonna here is gonna be so you can change that in here. It's gonna be the output coin, output uh, contact in there, and that's gonna be output one. Yes, and that stays this, and that stays this. Again, I'm not gonna name anything, but so pretty much uh, it's just like sort of a give you an idea about the programming. Let's say we created all that, so we done this. So I want stars that will stop and that will latch in. So and then we go back into the communication. Let them connect up and a PC to device, and that is it. So it checks, well, I don't want any password, no, just pump it all in there. So now it just literally puts it, we'll put all the stuff, what we just did inside the controller. It's fairly straightforward once you get your head around with it. And I'll quickly show you as well a couple of things before we go, come on. There we go, that's done. And before we check things out, as you can see, on a, uh, once you are online, yeah, you have a couple of uh, buttons in here. First one in here, it is a we, we can put a device into run mode, which we're going to do now. Let's put the device into run mode. And also, as you can see down there, status display on, which is more or less called as a monitoring. So uh, let's go into click on that one. It will take you straight into the uh, program, as you can see. Uh, we have a red in it. Don't ignore this one. This is for next video. But as you can see, this is our program. So if I click my uh, start button, as you can see, it will show you the stage changes and so on and so on. So that's pretty much uh, what else you can do in here. And obviously, you still have a, a simulation here. Yeah, simulation is really good. Do do check it out right here in the bottom. All you need to do is click that and just click uh, click play, and then you can start playing around with all or everything you want to do. So we're not gonna do that. So let's jump back on a controller. I will check it out, what we just did. And uh, that should be done for this video. Here we are, so let's zoom out a little bit. So let's have a look on our little system what we got in here. So uh, here's our start stop buttons down here. If I click on start stop button, as you can see, my output is uh, on, Q1 is on. And it can be about the spinning and there we go. So that's pretty much what we have done. So that ladies and gentlemen will do for this video. Hopefully it is helping you out, getting you going and uh, you're well on your way. So do ask any questions you have in the description below. We'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy what we're doing here, don't forget to subscribe. It definitely helps out. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.